there, I'm Shirley Liu, your go-to certified tax planner. Uh, we work with small business owner and real estate professionals. And so far, we've saved our client $2 million in counting. Today, let's talk about something that can save you a lot of headaches, uh, which is quarterly estimated tax. So what is quarterly estimated tax? Um, quarterly estimated tax are payment made to IRS or your state local government four times a year. Uh, they're a way for individuals uh, who are not automatically withholding their income, so think freelancers or anybody who own a business, to pay their taxes as they go. So um, in another word, it's a pay-as-you-go system. So why is this uh, paying quarterly taxing important? Because uh, paying your quarterly estimated tax on time avoid surprise tax bills when you file your income tax the following year and also help avoid penalties. So what are the penalties? If you did not pay any quarterly estimated tax, you could be subject to two types of penalty. One is the underpayment penalty, uh, which is typically 5% of your underpaid tax amount. Another penalty is failure to pay penalty, which is uh, accruing at 0.5% per month on the uh, underpaid tax amount. And this is capped at 25% of the underpaid taxes. Um, and by the way, underpaid taxes um, are also accruing interest, uh, which is set up at the IRS rate uh, that they issue quarterly. And that's typically on par with the market interest rate. So adding the two So when are these taxes due? Four times a year, these quarterly taxes are due. Uh, after your Q1 wraps up at end of March, your first quarterly tax payment is due on April 15th, second is on June 15th, third is on sep September 15th, and the last one is due on January 15th the following year. Uh, for our clients, uh, most of them are self-employed individuals and they do have payrolls for themselves. So we typically don't recommend them to make any Q1, Q2 um, estimated tax because you know their income could fluctuate. Um, the income tax they withheld from their payroll could be enough for the first two quarters. But we do look at Q3 and Q4 very closely with our clients to figure out you know, what their total tax liability looks like when they file their taxes next year and see if any tax planning we can do before year end. So who needs to pay those quarterly estimated tax? So again, if you are a freelancer, if you have your own business, if you are a real, real estate investor, or like an active stock trader with a lot of capital gain, um, basically you could be owing more than $1,000 tax liability every quarter. And if that's the case, you should be paying quarterly estimated tax. Now calculating your quarterly tax can be a very daunting task, um, but it's not really rocket science. Um, you can pretty much estimate it based on your last year tax, or you can calculate your current year estimated uh, income with, with this formula, right? So if you have self-employment income, uh, you need to first figure out what your self-employment tax is. So you start by looking at your net earnings subject to self-employment tax. Let's say your net business profit is 100K, then your net earnings subject to self-employment tax is 100K multiplied by 0 0.9235. And the reason for that is because half of the self-employment tax is actually uh, deductible. Then you calculate your self-employment tax by taking that net earning and multiply it by 15.3%. So in this case, your self-employment tax will be 14130 then you add up any other tax liability you may have on your W-2 income, on your dividend, interest, capital gain, um, and then that will give you your total tax liability for the year. Then you adjust for any tax deductions and credits you may have. Then that will give you your total tax. Divide that by four is your quarterly estimated tax payment. If you want to make this a little bit easier, you could use that 1040 ES worksheet. Um, again, there are a bunch of step-by-step -step videos on YouTube on how to fill that out. So that will give you very good guidance on how to calculate your quarterly estimated tax. The 
let's not forget about the safe harbor rule. This is, can be a lifesaver. Essentially, it says if you pay at least 90% of your current year tax li liability using that formula on the last slide, or if you take a look at your last year's tax return and then pay 100% of whatever tax you pay last year, or 1.1 times of whatever last year's tax was, if your AGI is over 150K, then you will not have to worry about penalties, even if you owe more taxes when you actually file your tax return, which could be April 15, or if you file extension, it could be October 15. Again, remember when you file your extension, your taxes are still due, right? Like So if you have not provided your accountant with a very accurate or good bookkeeping, um, you know, the, your safest bet is to just pay whatever you pay last year, right? Then at least you don't have to worry about the underpayment penalty when you actually file your taxes. This is like a safety net, Make sure that making sure that you're not penalized as long as you're paying taxes within those thresholds. So how do you make those payments? Making those payments is easy. You can do it online or by phone or through mail. Again, the instructions are actually on the IRS website. Um, and then you can follow those uh, instructions very easily. We always recommend pay online because that way you don't have to worry about check getting lost and you get an instant confirmation after it's paid. And you can send that to your CPA so they will factor that in when they do your tax return. Just make sure that you pay your uh, estimate tax by before the deadline so you don't have to pay any penalties. So. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, remember to stay top of on top of your quarterly estimate tax. Um, it's one to avoid surprise tax bill next year. Two is to get you in a good habit of keeping good, you know, tax record. It just makes uh, you know filing tax next year a lot easier, and it's also good record keeping for your business. Um, you know, if remember what doesn't get measured doesn't get improved. So keeping that good record is very, very important. And if you have any further questions, feel free to reach us out. That's what we're here for. Thank you so much for your time.